Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. This is your host, the Barkeep, bringing you Podcast 90 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. Well, as I just stated, we are presented by Hirotaku.com, and today I'd like to go ahead and uh, first draw attention to an article written by one of the other contributors uh, to Hirotaku, uh, that is uh, Taja Doyle. And uh, Mr. Doyle has written an article uh, about n- further news that has come out of Power Morphicon, specifically news uh, related to Bandai, which, of course, is everybody's favorite topic here at the Tavern. Um, so basically, the gist of the article is, is that Bandai representatives from Power Morphicon states uh, that they want to hear more from the Power Rangers fan community on what they can do to improve the legacy line of Power Ranger toys. So today, what I'm going to go ahead and do with you guys is discuss with you what I think Bandai should be doing to improve their overall products. Now, my intention is not to turn this into a rant video like we've had before. So I'm going to do very hard to avoid that, but I will make no promises. As you guys know, I'm very emotional. I get very heated and very livid uh, about this particular topic, but I will do as best I can to kind of restrain that. But I definitely want to go into with you guys what I think that Bandai should be doing to improve not just the legacy line, but overall Bandai products. Because I think the fallacy here is that Bandai wants to improve the legacy line. Really, there's nothing wrong with the legacy line. As long as they continue to make the products that they have been, these good, high-quality products... I'm fine with that. I mean, this is some of the best work that Bandai of America has done in a long, long, long time. So I think the legacy line is fine as it is. But what Bandai should be doing is looking at improving the overall quality of all their toys, not just the legacy line. Because I'm going to be honest here, I think we've reached the point where we expect better out of Bandai. They've been producing Power Ranger toys for 21 years now, and frankly, the quality of said toys has gone down. Whether that's being switching from die-cast metal alive cases to regular plastic, not using the Japanese molds, and not in, in some cases, not even releasing toys altogether. And I'm looking at the Mystic Brothers uh, runner from, you know, Go Sager, uh, Super Mega Force. I mean, why was that ostrich never in America? But I digress. They've made a lot of lousy decisions. So today, I'd like to go ahead and tell you guys what I'd like to go ahead and do with Bandai if I could give them my suggestions. Um, and I will go ahead and note, too, that of course, the most infamous video here at the Tavern was the uh, Onyx Tavern uh, rant on Bandai of America, but I'm going to be a little bit more even-headed here and just tell you guys straight up what they should be doing. And if you are a Bandai representative and you are listening to this, which I hope you are, then you'll have an understanding of somebody who's been a fan of the franchise for years and years and what I expect to be great quality, not only for people in my age bracket, but for you know kids in the age bracket where I first started watching Power when I was about six or seven years old because I'd like to think that what I'm about to go ahead and recommend here is going to be good for everybody okay so with that all the way here are just uh, some of the major points I would go ahead and hit first make the legacy line your standard don't make it an exception to the rule make it the rule by which I mean So the Legacy Megazord came out, and I'm going to use that as an example, as that's the only one I really have at the moment. And die-cast metal, high-quality parts, show-accurate stickers and decals, uh, the whole thing is really amazing. Now, it's not without its flaws, but for the first product that they released, it was really good. Compare that to the toys that are coming out now for Super Mega Force. Um, Low-quality plastic cheap paint they don't uh they're they're really small they don't work properly there's a number of issues out there and you guys can go ahead and look at it especially when you compare it to the japanese counterpart so and we'll get into that here in a second but if you were to make all the zords because if you're not going to use the japanese molds and you're going to make your own original because the the legacy megazord is, is totally original. They didn't use the Japanese molds to make that particular product. I mean, because, again, it's made of die-cast metal. It's shaped differently. It's actually smaller. 
So if you're going to go ahead and go against what the Japanese uh, have done there and make something unique and original, then why not go all out with it? Why do we have to have this $30 cheap piece of plastic that you guys are selling uh, of the Megazords when we can go ahead and have this high quality, well-crafted toy every year? Why can't that go ahead and be your standard? And then look at the morphers. The Gose morphers, or uh, wherever they're called uh, at this point in Power Rangers history, are made of cheap plastic. You know, they can break easily and then all that stuff. But the legacy morphers are made of die cast metal, show accurate stickers, the coins are amazing, the detail that went into that. I mean, they are amazing. And the last thing that I have is, is the helmet thing. Why not make a helmet set for every season of Power Rangers and whenever you release it, every season? Why aren't these products the ones that we are getting every single year? Why are we getting these cheap plastic parts? So, the first thing I would say is make the legacy line the standard. Take what you've learned from making the legacy products, and when Dino Charge comes out, make all your products up to that standard of quality at a bare minimum. If not, make them better than what you've done with the legacy line. Improve it as best you can. Don't settle for, again, $30 of cheap plastic uh, that's going to go onto store shelves. Go ahead and get this high-quality product that people love. I mean, I haven't seen one person who says they do not love the legacy line of products. But could you imagine if everything they made was up to the same standard? I, I think that's the first thing that Bandai should start at, is look at what they've done right, the legacy line, and just replicate that to your standard line of products, okay? Now, the second point I would go ahead and say is that if you can't do the legacy line, or if you are going to leave the legacy line as a secondary, then simply use the Japanese molds, okay? Why do, do the Zords have to be smaller? Why do they have to be made of less plastic? Why can't they transform like they normally would? And again, I have the Gokaio, awesome product, Japanese mold, but when I have the American product, it's smaller, the plastic is not as good, the paint job is not as good, and you have to use the rinky-dink little ranger keys that they've brought over to the United States to go ahead and activate it. I mean, frankly, one of the things that Bandai of America has been doing is making toys smaller, which is kind of odd when you think about it as, you know, generally speaking, Americans are larger in size and stature than most Japanese. Yet, the Japanese get the bigger toys and the American children get the smaller toys. I've never under understood that. And you have to talk about kids and not adults, but it seems to be a backwards philosophy, if you ask me, that, to make things smaller. Because, again... Hey, this is America, ain't it? Everything's got to be big, right? That's what I thought. That, I thought that's what America was all about. <laughs> but I digress on that point as well. So again, use the Japanese molds. Go ahead and bring them over exactly as they were in Japan. Why can't we do that? Is there a reason that we can't? I mean, I, I, I never understood this argument that people are making about how if you bring the Japanese molds over and you sell them at an equal rate that you do Japanese toys, then American parents can't afford them. Well, why can't American parents afford them? I see parents all the time buying $200 Lego sets and the $400 Jimboree sets that they put up in the backyards and stuff and all this other rinky-dink crap for a dollar. Well, why don't you give your children high-quality products? And frankly, yeah. Some of those toys are going to cost $60, $70 and all that, but I'll give you an example of when I went over to Japan. I went ahead and got one of the Legacy Reshas, and I'll give uh, Ghostager. That's the one, one of the ones, that, the many ones that I have at the moment. That was $11.99 American, roughly when, when you go ahead and work it out, $12.50 tax, however you want to go ahead and put it. So it's a $12 product. So you're telling me, then American parent can't go out and pay $12 for a little trained toy for their children. And if they had two children, $24 and so forth and so forth, how many they have. I mean, that seems like, re that seems reasonable to me that parents can go ahead and afford. And when I look at the police reshaw, well, that was $15. 
I think $15 on a single toy is reasonable for any parent. And when I went ahead and bought the uh, build dio for um, uh, Tokyo Roko, and I hope I got that right in my Japanese, well, that was $40 for a single train toy that changed into a robot. So to me, the pricing, at least on the Tokyo line for this season, is very reasonable for adults to go ahead and make. No matter, you know, if you're working two jobs or anything like that, I think the prices are reasonable. Everybody's saying like $80, $90 toys. Well, once you get up to the higher ones and the Bragigases and the very large ones, or in some cases when you buy dual sets, yes, they're going to go ahead and be expensive. But I don't see a reason why Bandai couldn't take the same lessons that what Jap Japan was doing. Because in a lot of seasons, what they were doing was taking single Zords and selling them individually. And I'll give you a great example of this that happened years and years ago. Uh, when Voltron came back in its 3D show, they actually re-released the Voltron toys, or at least a new version of them. And when you went to the store, you had the option of either buying each lion individually or buy it as a complete set. And depending on how much money you had, you could either get the complete set or you can get each one individually and eventually work up to it. So why isn't that something that they're willing to do here? Because I've always find that kind of, I've always found that kind of odd about Bandai of America as opposed to Bandai of Japan is that you can buy the Zords a la carte in Japan but here in America, you always have to go ahead and get them uh, in a box set. And one example I'll give of that uh, is from Bokanger uh, Operation Overdrive, since that is very recent in our memory. Now, in both countries, you would buy the uh, Drive Max Megazord. We'll just use the American name as a single product. But in Bokanger, you could buy the cement mixer, the crane, um, the 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 the. the, the uh, it's a cement mixer, the crane, the jet, all those, you could buy those individually. They were packaged individually for like maybe $20. I think the most expensive was maybe $30 or something around that range. And you could buy them individually. And that would save money in your pocket. And it wouldn't be until the end of Bokanger's run that they would actually package them together in a complete set where you could get all 10. I spent $300 on eBay on that, but I'm sure in Japan the price was a little bit more manageable and it was not sold on eBay. Pardon me. So why don't they go ahead and do that? Just sell each Zord individually, and then that way you can save money. Yeah, kids may not get the entire set, but at that age, you're not always concerned about getting the entire set. You're just concerned about getting maybe your favorite. So when we apply that to Dino Charge right now, okay, sell the Tyrannosaurus as a single Zord, and then you can go to a store and pick up the pink Triceratops. Uh, the blue stegosaurus, the green raptor. You can pick those up individually. And then at the end of the year, if you think the profits are going to go ahead and warrant it, then put them all in a complete set and then charge the $70, $80 for anybody who didn't pick them up during the year. And of course, in that particular case, Bandai can then find out how popular the pink Zord is and see if they were justified in what they were trying to do or what they did do or anything like that but I kind of digress on that point as well. So again, use the Japanese molds. I don't see why they haven't. I've never heard a good explanation from Bandai. And again, if all you're concerned about is the price that little kids are gonna go ahead and pay, first of all, it's their parents. Two, Bandai has more than enough power to change the prices to a reasonable budget for Americans, uh, American consumers to go ahead and get. They can package them any way they want that makes them more reasonable for American consumers to go ahead and get. And again, stop with all this, this cheapness that, that everybody is doing. That's the biggest problem that I have is that the Japanese have amazing products and you're taking them and turning them into something bad. You, you're, you're making yourself look bad by doing this and all you have to do is actually it's less work when you think about it. I mean, just, just being honest here, instead of redesigning these molds and print them off here, go to Japan and just import all this stuff over here or make them to the exact specifications. That way, as the American way is, you can be lazy and just copy off another country's work. Okay? So... Again, that's my second point, is go ahead and release the Japanese molds in stores over here. Now, if for some reason Bandai doesn't want to do those first two options, then I give you the 
perhaps the best option, and I think the one that will actually work. And that would be to release the Japanese versions directly to the American consumer. And what do I mean by that? All right. Anybody who buys toys from Japan from the Super Sentai series knows you cannot find them on Toys R Us. You cannot go to the Japanese website and get them. You have to go through a third-party vendor. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this vendor as an example since they are no longer in business. Uh, that is ToysAndJoys.com. For those of you who've never uh, gone through that company, they were a, a small toy company based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. And of course, they were notorious uh, for their late shipments, sending wrong shipments, uh, and the fact that they were overpricing their products. But that really, I think, has more to do with um, cost of living in Japan. But I digress. Uh, or excuse me, cost of living in Hawaii, because everything in Hawaii is expensive. You can ask my friend Dory about that. But I digress on that point. So if you bought these products, you'd have to go through toysandjoys.com to go ahead and buy them or any number of other sites out there through the third party and what would typically happen is they would buy them from japan get like 50 60 or whatever number of the particular products bring them over but you would have to go ahead and pay extra again for the cost of living in that particular state and then you have to pay for overseas shipping since hawaii is an island and there are many other companies that do this uh, now, here's a positive website, and I suggest you guys go ahead and take a look at CS Toys International. But the problem with CS Toys International is they do sell them at the same rate as the Japanese consumers get. But because they are based out of, I believe, Hong Kong, um, you have to go ahead and pay extra for shipping. And if you don't get the expedient shipping within a reasonable amount of time, you'd have to wait, in some cases, four to six or eight weeks for a product to go ahead and come in. And I love the, the store. They've been great to me and everything. But man, does it take forever to go ahead and get the products. So your problem, most of the time, is either A, you're paying way too much for a particular product because the person selling it either is living in a state where the cost of living is more expensive, therefore the price goes up, or somebody who's intentionally trying to exploit the, you to get more money out of this particular product because they know it cannot be easily obtained. So they will go ahead and charge you more. And then we have the issue with shipping because if you buy typical sow shipping, that's four to six weeks minimum. And I've had issues where it's been eight weeks in a lot of cases because they didn't have that particular item in stock, but they sold it to me anyway, waited for blah, blah, blah. Again, not CS Toys, but Toys and Joys was very notorious for doing this. It took me nearly two months to go ahead and get the Dika Command base. But I digress once again. So what's the solution here? Go through these third parties who charge you way too much, take too long to go ahead and ship to get your products. Well, uh, and I'll give you, let me give you another anecdote and I'll go into my further solution. Uh, as many of you all who listen or know me personally, my wife is Korean. And in Korea, they've actually started releasing the Power Ranger toys um, as, you know, Korean Power Rangers, which is simply, you know, the Japanese molds repackaged with Korean or some of the voice recordings changed to Korean, which is kind of, which is a great idea. If you ask me, that's really what should be going on. That's what should be happening here in America. But my wife tried to get me uh, a toy from the website one time, and she called over there and asked, well, I'm not living in Korea, I'm living in the United States, so can you send it here? And the woman said uh, plainly, we do not ship to the United States. So my wife, who can speak Korean and can get these toys for me, cannot have them sent here. She ultimately had to have it sent to her sister in Ulsan, and then her sister had to mail it to me which cost my sister money to go ahead and do so. And even when my sister, uh, sister-in-law, excuse me, my sister-in-law living there had to pay the extra money. And when she got me uh, the Gao Lion for my birthday, she had to go ahead and buy it, pay shipping to get to her in Korea, and then pay shipping to get to me in America. And I felt really bad for that. My sister having the sister-in-law having to pay extra money just to get me this particular product. 
So even in that case, you buy directly from, say, the Japanese website or the Korean website. Well, first of all, you have to know somebody who can speak that language or speak it yourself. And then you have to have an address in that country to get sent to. And then you have to have somebody over there actually send it to you. So you have to go through all these hoops just to get it directly. Now, of course, the easiest way people will say is just go directly to Japan. Well, I'm sorry, everybody, but I spent six grand going over to the country this summer, and I don't think that's justifiable for everybody to be able to go ahead and do. You have to work off these third-party sites. Why? Because it's the only option. Therefore, my suggestion would be have Bandai of Japan, Bandai of America, however you want to go ahead and do it, open an English site to where you can buy direct Super Sentai toys from Japan and have them sent to the United States and Canada or anywhere, okay? Now, why do I think this would go ahead and work? If it is tied into the Japanese inventory, first, you would be able to buy directly from the source. You would pay the same rate as they would pay in Japan, so no, over, no overpricing on the particular products. And typically, when you do it through corporate sites, as opposed to third party, since corporate sites are always sending out bulk shipments to wherever and so forth, typically the shipping is going to be a little bit less, and they do pay for things like FedEx, UPS, or whatever it is they have over there to where it gets here in a reasonable time. So what you do by having this website is you eliminate overpricing, you get reasonable shipping rates, and I would assume with reasonable shipping rates, you also get reasonable uh, time in which it is delivered. And I think the biggest benefit that this would go ahead and provide is that it would actually let Bandai of America know how many people in the United States are buying their products. Then you can compare what products are being sold, what works in America, correlate that data to improve the Bandai of America line, or even correlate that data to what type of toys would sell in America so that Saban, since they are tied so heavily with Bandai, can say, wow, these train toys are selling very well in the United States. I think we can adapt Tokyo and the Power Rangers Rail Force. I really think that's something that would be greatly beneficial to both the American side, the, J the Japanese side, and most especially the American consumer. Because who doesn't want to find products? And if you have the ability to order directly from Japan and you don't have to go to that third party, well, then that's amazing. Now, yes, this will affect those third party dealers like CS Toys. And yes, that's going to be an unfortunate casualty, but they still have other products that they can go ahead and sell. And there are people always going to be buying from third parties. Not everybody's always going to buy directly from the source. That, that is just a fact. I never buy my textbooks from the bookstore anymore. I use Amazon.com. I use eBay. Again, that's just kind of the fact of life here. But for the bad that that would do for the third party, I think it does great for the business of Bandai and does great uh, for, for uh, the consumers. Because once you know that people are buying it and they're willing to spend the money on it, then they're going to be able to change it because they see the demand for it and they will supply it, i.e. supply and demand. But the thing is you also have to advertise this website because I can see them doing something like that, but not informing the general public. That it's just something you have to find on your own or that they limit the qualities to such a point that they only have five megazords available and they will restock soon, quote, much kind of in the way uh, Toys R Us has been doing it in some cases. But I think, that's, I think that's the biggest thing right there. If you can let us go buy it from you directly, now I have to go through this rigmarole of buying through a third party, having to buy through another country, ship it, waste our money. Because that's what they are doing is wasting our time and money. I mean, what did Fry say? You know, you know, take my money or whatever the, the meme is. Um, it's escaping me. Shut up and take my money. That's all I'm trying to go ahead and say to Bandai. Shut up and take my money. But if I'm going to give you your money, it better be damn worth it. And to me, the Japanese products, which are far superior to the American products, is definitely worth it. So to sum up my three points, make the legacy line the standard. 
import Japanese molds, have direct website to access the Japanese products. I think that if you use all three of those ideas, or even one, I think we can definitely improve Bandai's standing. Now, are they ever going to stop making these cheap American products? I believe they will. But they have to listen to their consumers, and we actually have to spend our money on good products. Because if we go out there and buy that Turbo Falcon Megazord, which is not show accurate, is made of cheap uh, plastic, is a piece of crap, then they think the American consumer wants American crap. Therefore, we will give it to them. But if we go and buy the Gokaiger toys and they say, oh, they want the Japanese stuff. They've been going on our website. We've had 10,000 sales of this particular product, but we've had very little sales of its American counterpart. Then they will wise up to the fact that we want these better products. And I think that's all we need to go ahead and do. And again, you can complain all day about the price. That's an argument that I think, I don't think that's going to hold water. I mean, because you look at all the toys that kids out there buy, you look at all the crap that Americans spend their money on and everything, I don't think paying $50, $60 for a, a Megazord is going to break the bank on anybody's family. And I think that you can find ways around that, not only as the consumer, but as the people who are producing the product. So, I'd like to think that that will go ahead and solve the issue. I hope that Bandai of America will listen to me. And I'm going to take every attempt I can to direct Bandai of America to this video so that they can listen to it and they can understand at least this one Power Ranger fan's uh, idea here. So I ask you, loyal viewers uh, or loyal patrons of the tavern, first of all, what do you guys think of my ideas? Do you think any of these will go ahead and work? Do you think they're reasonable? And how would you guys make them better? And overall, what are your ideas to improve not only the legacy line, but just Bandai, Bandai of America total? What, what do you guys think we should go ahead and do uh, as Power Ranger fans to tell them, hey, this is what we want, this is what we think will work? So I want to thank you guys for listening. I uh, hope you really enjoyed my thoughts right here. Um, so again, leave your comments below. And also, we are still running uh, our donation drive. We have two websites going, both for Patreon.com and Kickstarter. The links will be in the description below. Donate what you can, and we will uh, eventually have Power Ranger episode reviews, but only if we make our goal. So people, please donate uh, to the Onyx Tavern, and we will get uh, high-quality uh, Power Ranger uh, episode reviews up here shortly. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have yourself a good night. And the tavern is now closed.